Hey up, I'm the Yorkshire Time Lord. This is my review of Doctor Who Legend of the Sea Devils. Well, 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 that was a great episode. What a lot of fun. I liked Legend of the Sea Devils. I've been hoping for the Sea Devils to return for so long because they're such a great villain. And Chris Chibnall and Ella Ward, you did not disappoint. This episode gave us so many fun moments, uh, such as the sword fighting sequences between the Sea Devils and the Doctor and Dan and Yaz, and a great bit of diversity with Madame Ching and the Chinese pirates, and a great score by Segun Akinola, who really excels himself on the score front here, let me tell you. And it has such a great pace to it as well. The episode's really fast and relentless and there's always something going on and it really plays with a the pirate theme. You have Dan dressed in that ridiculous costume with the eye patch and the pinstripe shirt and Yaz and the Doctor dressed uh, very appropriately for the period. I mean, John Bishop as Dan, he has been a revelation in that part. He's so funny as Dan Lewis. He really makes me laugh. Really, really makes me laugh. Uh, that whole thing about how he just does astronomy on his phone, he's going to learn astronomy but he just, he just does it on his phone, that made me chuckle a lot. And when the, uh, and, and, and when he's shocked at, be, at people thinking he's in his 60s but he's actually in his 40s, I mean that just feels like a moment that I can imagine a lot of people probably, you know, go through, that, uh, you know, in their, in their 60s. I mean, I wouldn't know because I'm only 26, but the people that are in their 60s, they must go through things like that a lot, I'd imagine. But it was quite funny to see. But John Bishop, he's great at the emotional moments as well. When he just takes Yas to one side and he says, you know, have you not noticed the Doctor's got feelings for you like you've got feelings for her? And he's great at playing those really subtle emotional moments. He seems like a caring father type to Yas. I like the relationship for us to have. Sometimes they're bickering and he's calling her Sheffield and they have that bit of comedy banter between each other. And then, you know, they have these really subtle emotional moments which carry a lot of dramatic weight. And John Bishop's great at playing that. He really, he really is. It shows his strength as an actor that he can go from that to the more comedic, comedic moments. But, you know, of course, Jodie Whittaker, she's absolutely fantastic as a doctor. Chris Chibnall really did cast the first female Doctor well, let me tell you. <laughs> that, oh, that bit of the beach at the end and she's telling Yaz why she can never be with anyone because of the life that she leads and eventually it's going to have to end. Something will either happen to her or happen to Yaz. Really powerful moment. The Doctor clearly loves Yaz. Yaz loves the Doctor, but the Doctor doesn't want to commit. I mean, yeah, you know, it may remind us a bit of, you know, the Doctor and Rose in Series 2. You know, there's, there's some similarities there. But I think it's different enough. Because this Doctor seems to be a bit more forward about it. She's not afraid to tell Yaz that she can't be with her. Whereas the 10th Doctor, you know, skirted around it a bit more. He was a bit more hesitant, to be honest, with Rose and to say that he can't really settle down with her. And it led to that moment on the beach in Doomsday where it felt like he was about to say, I love you, to Rose. And then, oh my god, he just disappears and you're like, oh my god, no, we don't get that moment where he tells her. But the doctor, this doctor's, I mean, she, she's up front about her feelings, which is you know, great to see. It's something a bit different. And it speaks to the more sort of um, emotional honesty of Jodie Whittaker's doctor. And the way that Jodie Whittaker plays it, oh, she is a bit aloof. But her sort of aloof nature is hiding this more emotional undercurrent where she has these really deep feelings about the people she travels with and she feels really close to them. She really cares about them like no other doctor does. And it's really great to see. And another aspect of this episode I really liked was the design of the Sea Devils. It's a really authentic recreation of the Sea Devils and how they looked in 1972 with the Sea Devils. And it 
really brings them to life. I think this is kind of like the approach they should have gone for for the Silurians in Hungry Earth slash Cold Blood. Because it really does feel like the same species from the Sea Devils in a way that the Hungry Earth Cold Blood Silurians didn't in a sense. And they feel like an effective continuation of those same Sea Devils. I think these ones, you know, they, they are, you know, they're a bit more, a bit more violent. They're not quite so friendly. Which, you know, I'm fine with. Uh, you look at humanity. Hum humanity has some good people, some bad people. I guess sea devils, they have some good people, some bad people. You know, the sea devils probably have some people who are like, a bit like Donald Trump, where they think, my god, that guy's an idiot. You know, why did anybody in uh, that far flung country or sea devil or whatever they call their places underground, why did anybody ever vote for them to be our leader? We definitely have people like that. You think what the sea devil was gonna do? He was gonna just wipe us out. He was, he was gonna turn the earth into basically a water world where it was just water and we can't survive that. We just get washed out with the currents, so it's purely sea devils. God, that is quite quite evil just to turn it into an aqua world like that. I mean, that sea devil isn't that sea devil. There's no stopping that sea devil apart from when it did stop the sea devil, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and then. Um, and you look at the CGI as well, really strong CGI. The visual effects team really, really saw themselves out with that episode. The seabed looked absolutely magnificent. And that sea creature, which I don't think was the same one from Warriors of the Deep, because they didn't actually mention it by name. But it looked absolutely stunning nonetheless. Especially when it eats a TARDIS, it swallows a TARDIS, and uh, that whole scene of the TARDIS enters its underbelly. God, a beautiful, beautiful CGI with that ship as well, but the Sea Devil's Commandeer. That sh the, the, the Sea Devil's ship looked beautiful, and, you know, it really looks on par for things you see on Disney Plus with Moon Knight, which I love, and um, WandaVision, which I absolutely love as well, uh, which are Doctor Who, the Marvel Studios, but I'm going to mention them anyway because I love them, and why not? But... Yeah, stunning CGI. Really, really good CGI. I think if I was going to criticise this episode for anything, it'd probably be that it was maybe a little, little predictable in places. I mean, I did kind of guess that the ship that the Sea Devils had was the same one that went missing years ago. And yeah, it's kind of obvious when Dan ended up upside down that Madame Ching was going to let him go. I mean, she had a ship with no crew. She needed someone to help steer that ship. And for that point, uh, for, that manner, for that matter, for that matter, how on earth was she steering that ship anyway? I mean, she needed a crew to steer that ship. She must have been one hell of a pirate queen to be steering that ship for all that time without any crew to help man the sails and things like that. Blooping heck. And then, the editing did feel a little bit weird in places, I'm not going to lie. It was a little bit choppy. You know, and there were times where dogs and companions suddenly end up in a location without any explanation. And it does kind of lend itself to the rumour going around online that the episode was originally an hour and it was edited down to a 50 minute time slot. In which case, what the hell BBC schedulers, why didn't you just make it an hour? Puts it in a one hour slot from 7 to 8 o'clock. It's bizarre. They could have easily just kept it at an hour, if that is the case, and just kept it at an hour long. But I think overall, it was a great episode. It provided plenty of fun, plenty of laughs, and plenty of action. And I don't really know what more you could want for Easter Sunday, really. That's all you really want on Easter Sunday, just an episode that provides a, a really fun time. Anyway, what did you think about Legend of the Sea Devils? Let me know in the comment section. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.